Hey team, today's going to be a quick one. Yesterday, I ran into an issue where I had a Python test which was working fine locally on my MacBook, but when I tried to run the test inside of the Linux container where the application would eventually run, it failed. In this video, I'm going to go through three techniques that I used to debug this issue. If you're not familiar with Docker and containers, I would suggest that you first go watch Jake Wright's Learn Docker in 12 Minutes video to get a baseline understanding. I'll put a card linking to that video in the description above. After you've watched it, come back here to watch the rest of this video. If you're new here, I post weekly content related to DevOps and cloud infrastructure. I just cracked 200 subscribers a few days ago, and I'm super excited to keep the momentum going. If you find this video helpful, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Also, if you have any Docker-related tips of your own, leave them in the comment section below so that others can benefit as well. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, in order to have an actual example to work with, I've recreated a simplified version of the test here. I'm setting up two test cases, one where I set the time zone and one where I do not, and then I'm checking to see if the values match my expected value when I run the test. I've also created a simple Docker file, which starts from a Python base image, installs the necessary dependencies, copies in my source code, and then runs the Python executable. This way I can pass it the unit test module when I run my Docker container, and it should run through all these test cases. So let's start by actually running it inside the container. I'll build my image first. Then I'll run the container and pass it unit test as my command. Okay, both tests pass. Now what happens if I run it locally on my MacBook? Both tests run, but we see that we got a failure on one of the test cases with this assertion error. Now this example is simple enough that it's quite easy to debug and look and see that our time zones are the root cause. However, when I ran the test that inspired this post, I got an error message that looked something more like this. As you can see, it occurred many layers deep within libraries, within modules, and it was much harder to tell what was actually going on. So I had to do some poking and prodding and investigation to actually uncover the root cause. That's what I'm going to show you how to do now. My first tip is to actually change the entry point on the container so that we can have it running and actually get a live running shell on the container that we can interact with. Now by default, containers are programmed to run a specific workload and when that workload finishes, the container will disappear. So if I run docker ps, which will list all the running containers on my system, we see that none are actually active. However, I can override the entry point of that container at runtime into something that will just remain open. And so if I do docker run, and then I'm going to pass it a dash i flag for interactive and a dash d flag so it runs in the background as a daemon, I'll then pass it the entry point flag. And let's just set it equal to bash. Now the container runs, and I can see it active here. With that container now running in the background, I can use the docker exec command to get a live interactive shell inside that container. Okay, now this shell is running inside of that container, and I can do whatever debugging actions I want uh, inside of that environment. So for example, I could bring up a Python uh, interpreter. I can import the same packages that I used in my tests. And I can check how those modules behave in this environment. Changing the entry point and then getting a live shell inside the container is a great way to have an interactive method of probing at different things and examining how they behave in the two different environments. Sometimes though, your application will create files within the Docker file system that you want to compare to something outside of the Docker file system. This brings me to tip number two. We can use the docker copy command to copy files either to or from the Docker container and our host system. So let's update our test so that it actually writes out to a file. Now when this first test runs, it'll create a time.txt file inside the container. Because I updated my source file, I'm going to rebuild the container first. With the container image rebuilt, I'm going to rerun it and again use that same entry point override so that the container will remain running after the test finish and I'll be able to copy that file outside of the container. Now that I'm inside my container, I'll run the Python unit test command. 
and we can see that it generated this time file. Now I'm going to exit the container and copy this file out. The path within the container is in this source file. And so we use destination and then source. And here we go. We could take that file and do whatever comparison we wanted to across the two different versions and see if there's any discrepancy that might point us to the root cause. All right, time for the third tip. We can actually run a debugger inside the container and attach to it remotely from our host system. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Because we're likely not going to have a debugger running inside of our primary Docker image, since it would just add unnecessary bulk, we're actually going to modify our Docker file and take advantage of multi-stage builds so that we can have one debugger image and one primary image that would actually run our application. So we've added a few lines here. We started by naming our first stage as base. And so this is the base image that contains Python. It contains our test cases and the necessary dependencies. Then we've created two additional stages, one that we're naming debugger, in which we install this additional dependency debug pi, and we change the entry point to use it. And then this primary stage is exactly the same as it was before. Now, when we build our image, we can target a specific one of these stages. So let's build the debugger image. With that built, we can now run our unit tests inside of there, and it's actually going to be broadcasting that debugger on port 5678. So we'll need to expose that port in our Docker run command. With the dash p flag, we can expose our localhost 5678 to localhost 5678 inside that container and actually connect the debugger. We can see now that the container actually doesn't return right away. At this point, we'll actually need to configure VS Code to connect to that debugger. There's an article on the VS Code configuration website that walks through how to do that. You basically install the Python extension, and then we go in and we press Control Shift D or Command Shift D on Mac to set up this debugger system. Command Shift D brings up the debugger pane. We would then go here and say add config for whatever workspace we're working in. It is Python. And then we would use this remote attach command where we can specify that it's localhost and that's on, on port 5678. By doing this, it actually creates a configuration within our uh, launch.json file so that the debugger can connect remotely to that debugger inside the container. Now, if we go here and we actually hit the play button, we'll see that the tests ran. This is great, but we can do something even better. We can add a breakpoint inside of our test. So let's go here. Uh, and let's just set a breakpoint, let's say here. Let's rebuild uh, and rerun our container. OK, so we've rerun our container, and it's waiting for the debug client to connect. So now if I press the play button here, we hit that breakpoint. And then the debugger can actually show us the state of all of the variables within our within our code. We can use it to explore and understand what the state of all these variables are, how that might be impacting our tests, how it might be impacting our application, and really use all the powerful debugging tools that exist uh, from outside the container, connecting to our code running inside the container. OK, that's it for now. I hope that these three techniques come in handy the next time you need to debug something running with inside of a Docker container. Now, I have additional Docker-related content in the pipeline, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss those videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.